and he is going to be talking to us about what is happening in the states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. He's a great friend of mine. The last time you had a chance to listen to him on P Gurus was after the surprise verdict in the Greater Hyderabad Municipal Council elections that took place yes. about, I think, two years ago or so. So let's welcome <laughs> Sastri Garu. Sastri Garu, Namaskaram. How are you, Andy? Namaste. I am you. Sastri Garu, we, we go back a long ways. Uh, we have many mutual interests, uh, things that we are passionate about. And it's always an honor and pressure, pleasure to have you here. Uh, viewers, I don't know how much you know about Shastri Garu. He's an accomplished journalist. He has been in journalism for four decades or more than that. He has uh, edited Telugu as well as English newspapers and periodicals. Um, uh, you can look it up. He's very, very famous. He's too famous to not know. But at the same time, you are a global audience. I just wanted to make sure that we introduce him properly. Shastri Garu, if I miss something, please forgive me. Sir, the most important thing here is you have uh, been sort of like a reference barometer for me. Anytime I want to do a reality check about something happening in Andhra or in Telangana, we talk for 20 minutes about the topic and then I get clarity. Sir, talk to us a little bit. Let us start with Telangana first and then we can go to Andhra Pradesh. Talk to us about yes. what is happening in Telangana. Elections, by the way, viewers are on the 13th of May in both these states. 13th of May, yes. 1 3. So, so there is some time. So now alignments are still happening, I believe. I, and I think some things are done. So talk, walk to us through the whole thing, sir. And please touch upon what is going to happen in old Hyderabad seat. Over to you, sir. Okay. In the, Telangana, the picture is very, very clear. Because there is no alliance here. BJP is uh, fighting single-handedly and contesting all the 17 seats. Its main opponents are the ruling party Congress and the erstwhile ruling party TRS alias BRS of uh, KCR. Now, uh, the picture is very clear. The BJP has been doing very well and it is going to be a, a tough fight between Congress and BJP. The erstwhile ruling party TRS or BJP, BRS is nowhere in the picture. They can consider themselves fortunate even if they win one or two seats, that's all, at the best. Mostly, MIM stronghold is Congress, Hyderabad, and they are sure to win it. Asaduddin Vavaisi of MIM will get uh, Hyderabad seat. As regards the remaining 16 seats, at least BJP is sure to get at least seven seats. And Congress is sure to get eight seats. And there may be a tough fight for one or two seats. That is, this this was this kind of clarity is not there in Andhra Pradesh. I will come to that later. But as far as Hydra or Telangana is concerned, why the picture is very clear is two things. One. Even, the, even though their local issues play a role in assembly elections, when it comes to parliament elections, it is their national issues play a dominant role. And the public sentiment is overwhelmingly in favor of Narendra Modi and his performance, especially after Ayodhya and Ram, uh, uh, Ram Mandir's installation. And th that is going to play a very crucial role. BJP has been doing self goals repeatedly, even during assembly elections. It is not at all in good shape even today. But still, Narendra Modi factor and his charisma is uh, taking care of all of the lapses. And despite their best uh, efforts to damage their interest, BJP is emerging stronger and stronger. They uh, presently have four seats. They are sure to retain all four, Karim Nagar, Nizamabad, Adilabad and Sikindrabad. They are also going to get Chevella and Malkasgiri. And uh, <coughs> and also Medak Kalsu. That is, uh, the, as it looks now, and I don't think there will be any rad radical difference from now to election time, because the battle lines are very clearly drawn. 
and congress why it is losing is it has helped bjp in a way it has damaged the credibility of the erstwhile ruling party and his kesia chief minister and the misdeeds of his government and also his family members the way states interests have been taken for uh, a ride all this they have successfully brought to light and people are no now better than they did earlier about the misdeeds of the previous government therefore the credibility of trs has taken a, a very serious uh, uh, dropping and the uh, congress has successfully blasted the image or the myth of trs but it is helping bjp in a way because congress has no machinery or no uh, uh, candidate uh, here in telangana districts because for 10 years it has been very dormant it came to power only recently in assembly elections that too because of the anti incumbency factor about the ruling party and also the mistakes committed by bjp several serious mistakes committed by bjp yet one time bjp was the front runner and congress has overtaken it that's why it is a fluke that they came to power in telangana in assembly elections but when it comes to parliament elections where congress is not at all in a good position to repeat their performance in assembly elections and they are going to get a very serious fight in the hands of bjp that is what it looks like now and uh, now i don't think there will be any change from now to elections sir one a couple of questions uh, sasigaru yes. first question is uh, you know you said that you know bjp made some mistake uh, before the state assembly elections uh, do you think that bandi sanjay's replacement by kishan reddy was a mistake yes it's a blunder not mistake it's a blunder of the first order that cast them away. otherwise they would have come to power or at least to emerge as the, the second largest party they they missed the chance removal of bandi sanjay was yeah not at all liked by the cadre it has demoralized the cadres it has sent a wrong signal to the party and it has given fuel to the right uh, various kinds of speculations that uh, bjp central leadership was hand in glove with or in collusion with trs and ksr that has helped it now wait yeah go ahead sir hmm. yes sir that uh, ask me no 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 i thought uh, you had finished your thought please complete your thoughts then i'll ask you go ahead now also bjp it is slightly better because and in fact another factor is going to help them if when it came to assembly elections the hatred or opposition towards trs ruling party was so great that people were determined to defeat congress trs candidates wherever they stand and when bjp was not seen as a serious contender in many places because of their own lapses even bjp voters have voted en masse to congress not for because of any love towards congress but to, because of their determination to boost trs from power because they were given uh, help by the erstwhile ministers of the previous government and they were playing roughshod with public uh, uh, interests therefore they were very vengeful to remove them that's why they have voted even many bjp voters have voted congress in at least to certain constituencies it is not the case now all those votes will definitely come back to bjp and narendra modi factor and other things combined will give them a comfortable win this time that's thank you sir and uh, the second question that i was having was about uh, hyderabad see we talked about uh, jhmc results at length and we talked about how the demography has been 
uh, changed in the old city to the extent that it is now 85% Muslim and 15% Hindu only. Yes. And even the 15% are trying to see what best deal they can get for their holdings that they can leave. That's how it is. I mean, at 15%, you are you are in danger. Now, Madhavi Lata is, sounds very full of fire and brim. What do you think are our chances? Will OAC still convince the electorate to vote for him? The sad reality is, forget about Madhavi Lata. Even if Narendra Modi comes and contests in Hyderabad, whole city will be defeated. He may he will lose his deposits because they have uh, uh, organized the rigging of missionaries so well. It is full of bogus voters, and you cannot do anything about it. And the election will not be fair, and uh, nobody can do about it. And Hindus have been systematically purged from Hyderabad. My old city over the last 30 years, systematically. Not like uh, Kashmir. In Kashmir, they were driven out in one go. That's why we remember that uh, uh, thing which was very well uh, picturized by Kashmir film. But here it went on quietly, systematically over a period of many years. In uh, batches of ones, two Hindu families have been made to leave the Hyderabad city by subtle pressures, blackmailing, and intimidation, violence, terrorism, and all, of all sorts. That's why they just ran away. Now Hyderabad is almost Pakistan, and you cannot do about it. They don't pay uh, uh, electric bills. No elected uh, uh, government official can enter there, and it is full of foreigners. Nobody can do about it. This we have been allowing this state of affairs for so long that we are paying the price for it. That's why Madhavi Lata is uh, deserves all our support. In fact, of all the candidates, she has been a fine brand. She has been talking great sense. And by hearing her, anybody would wish that she should be evil. Forget about the rest of the candidates. Here is a woman who is a real fighter who had the guts to come and uh, take on uh, OICs and MIM in Hyderabad. We, you would admire her guts. That's, but the thing is, our sentiments, our preferences will not work. And in uh, Hyderabad, Nobody can do about it. You can, Madhavi Lata will remain in history books. She will be remembered for long for the kind of guts she had, for the kind of uh, uh, inspiration she had given to others. But there is absolutely no chance of her winning because the, the BJP lacks missionary even at booth level in many places. That's why they can't get uh, votes. They can't pull votes. The waters are too few and they have been terrorized. That's why, because for that, Madhavi Lata is not responsible. It is we who are responsible for having allowed this state of affairs, Hyderabad becoming mini Pakistan, I have free India, and we did nothing to stop it. That's why we are paying the price. Hyderabad, you have to forget, Yamayam will get it. Sastri Garu, you're breaking my heart. You know, when I, as a high school student, for five years, I went to Old City to study. There is an Agarwal school, school group of institutions in Patargati. You know yes. Hyderabad very well. Patargati area, there is a Hyderabad uh, Agarwal school of institution, Nanakram Bhagwanda College. And, and then there are three or four. And I went to the high school there, sixth grade to tenth grade. And at that time, it was 55 45, 55 Hindu, yes. 45 Muslim. Demarcated areas were there. You don't go into this gully, you are going to be in trouble. The same way they never stepped into our gullies. I have so many friends who are still, you know, in that uh, Patagati area, a lot of wholesale shops. I don't know if it has changed now. They used to be all, you know, they were all sons and daughters of these people. They used to be uh, studying there. And now, if these people have systematically changed demography, you know, Ovesi, I thought he was an educated man. And I think 
very very disappointing to know that this kind of systematic putting people in fear and and also not uh, telling the people not to pay electricity bills you know shame on you obviously you 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 are uh, you are not doing any service to any of these people also shastri garu i also heard another thing one time <laughs> I, i was going in uh, hyderabad and you know one of the auto driver was a muslim boy and i asked him kitne kitne paise diye ovc bhai ne he said i have voted three times so far he has given me zero paisa they, he doesn't even pay money <laughs> and uh, another thing i have to add one more point it is not ovcs who are bosses of hyderabad they are no longer in control of hyderabad nowadays the rohingyas have taken over in many pockets isi has already penetrated and uh, al qaeda is there all kinds of international terrorism hyderabad is the attack and even uh, there was tremendous resistance to uh, ovcs and mim but since rohingyas don't vote or don't contest elections isis is not contesting elections the result will be in favor of mim not because they are in control but the thing is uh, hindus have no role or no space there that's the problem uh, also viewers uh, the current hyderabad international airport is on the outskirts of the old city i mean the old city is still growing a little bit and if you look at the entry before you get into the gates right you will see a machine gun and and mounted with a guy actually sitting there that that tells you the seriousness of what shastri ji is saying every time i go to hyderabad i look and see and that that thing is manned somebody is sitting there this is the kind of situation there is i i'm sure amit shah knows about this in fact if i remember correctly in 2019 he came to do puja in the old city big bandobast lot of slogan shouting and all that stuff i wonder if he is going to repeat that this time also bjp needs to support madhavi lata as much as possible uh, and one last thing sir you seven seats that you said that bjp could win three are adjacent right i mean sikandrabad made a uh, medak and uh, malkajgiri they are adjacent uh, constituency so it's more or less we can think of them as urban where people know that what they are getting for and things like that what about the new cyberabad area what uh, constituency does that fall under cyberabad area also bjp has a very strong hold chevella is there okay Chevela, in Chevela constituency, Konda Visayasaradi is going to win. Mm. In Sikandarabad, the uh, uh, Kishan Reddy Union Minister is going to win. Be not because of his own strength, but he has successfully managed to um, clear his path in elections by because he is a very shrewd tactician and very good strategist. That's why there is no problem for him. and there is another uh, constituency malkasgiri in malkasgiri etal rajendra bjp man is going to win by by his uh, excellent poll management of dc votes that's why as far as hyderabad is concerned except hyderabad seat there is no problem anywhere else bjp is having a very good seat see and another is, thing for irg property jihad business jihad etc are going rampant there is absolutely no security for common man's life very recently a very grave incident happened in chengicherla area where rohingya muslims came and attacked a hindu colony just because they are playing music on a hindu a holy festival day and there are police have totally that since it is congress government they are totally um, identifying themselves with muslims no cases were filed by the uh, dozens of muslims who were beaten black and blue and on the other hand cases were filed on hindus that they have attacked these rohingya heroes that that is that kind of lawlessness is going on is that's why people are terrorized nowadays So situation is really grave in Hyderabad, as you said. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we have to take a look at Andhra Pradesh also. But viewers, yes. most uh, uh, request to all of you to please like this video, make it go viral. Sastri ji has 
an ocean of knowledge. I'm going to ask you, Shastriji, after we talk about Andhra Pradesh, about one specific topic that has not been discussed in length uh, at length, in my opinion. First, let us take a look at Andhra Pradesh, sir. Over to you. Tell us how the lay of the land is. 25 seats up for grab. BJP is contesting in six seats. Over to you. But the thing is, the BJP has made uh, self goals, numerous self goals. They had a very good uh, okay, uh, um, chance to prove themselves and give a tough fight, but they have unfortunately not taken um, uh, advantage of this situation. Narendra Modi factor is a big factor, and especially in uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, there are two James quarreling. BJP is nowhere in the picture today, despite the uh, charisma of uh, Narendra Modi, it is uh, riding, uh, riding piggy bank, piggy bank on uh, Telugu Desham. Telugu Desham has to ensure votes and seats for them in the uh, places where they have been given a chance to contest. The fight is between YS Jagan of YSR CP and uh, Telugu Desham of Chandrababu Naidu. And the public sentiment is overwhelmingly against the ruling party. anti incumbency factor is terrific because of the lawlessness they have done. And every uh, uh, MLA was uh, a ringleader or a mafia don in the, his constituency. Common people were uh, have had a very tough time in dealing with this. And they were fed up with the kind of uh, uh, atmosphere. So everyone wants to a change. And uh, th that has been uh, playing a very lawlessness, is playing a very big part. People are disgusted with the ruling party. And initially, in uh, a few months back, till even two months back, the uh, perception is Chandrababu Naidu, especially after a false case has been foisted on him by Jagan government, his uh, public sympathy has gone very high and um, he was expected to win in alliance with the other party, Janasena of Pawan Kalyan, at least 120 seats. And Jagan was uh, considered to be fortunate even if he could win 40 seats at that time, till two months back. But in these last two months, there were many uh, goof ups and bunglings in the alliance build up and uh, they, too long a time was taken to frame the uh, forge the alliance and even today the seat adjustments have not yet been finalized there are murmurs and uh, uh, infightings everywhere and uh, that's why situation is not at all uh, so rosy to the alliance so even presently the uh, general understanding is if votes elections were held today, as per the present situation, <coughs> Telugu Desam Alliance, that is Telugu Desam, Janasena and BJP may get 100 plus seats and will surely form the government. And the ruling party Jagan, a ruling party of Chief Minister Jagan, which was um, trying earlier, now it is um, it has uh, picked up some strength it is giving a tough fight at least in 60 plus seats. So remaining 10 seats or so will be shared by BJP and uh, Janasena. So as of even today, it is almost certain Chandrabhav Naidu will form the next government and Pawan uh, Kalyan uh, will not be a big factor, but still he will emerge as a kingmaker in the post poll scenario. And BJP will, uh, because uh, uh, Telugu Desham has joined, whether Telugu Desham wins or BJP wins, the ultimate result will be NDA will be winning. That's the situation as I understand it. But the thing is, it is very fluid. Situation may change. And uh, another factor is the vote share is very, very doubtful. Because the sentiment in uh, Hindu circles, Hindu organizations, Sangh Parivar also, they had a very better experience when their BJP was in the alliance with Chandrababu Naidu and uh, went to polls in 2014 
and for five years it went on. It ended in a very uh, disastrous experience. Chandra Babu went out of the way and called Modi and Amit Shah all kinds of names. Even uh, Amit Shah was stoned in Tirupati like that and he went out of the way to ensure Narendra Modi's defeat in 2019 elections and he was in open alliance with the Congress at that time. So people find it very difficult to digest those facts or factors and now uh, the um, sentiment in Hindu circles, Hindu activists is not at all uh, favorable to alliance with Teludesham. Even if uh, BJP central leadership and Sangparivar leadership give, makes an appeal, the present it is very doubtful that BJP voters would vote for Teludesham candidates in at least in many constituencies where the contesting person is well, um, uh, has played a negative role very uh, often in the recent past. That's why vote share is different. And even among uh, uh, Telugu Desam is uh, um, uh, a party which is mostly uh, favored and patronized by Kama community. Janasena is a party, uh, Pawan Kalyan is the leader, but his main base is Kapo community. And there is a, a traditional rivalry between these two communities. There was very big animosity. And even today, there is terrific unrest even among the Janasena cadre, Janasena voters and supporters. Yet the, the way the alliance was forged, the way seats have been sacrificed, the way uh, Terminism has given a predominant role in uh, uh, the alliance affairs. That's why that factor also may play a role. So the vote share between the three parties may become a problem. Even despite all these problems, there should not be any problem in uh, ensuring Chandra Babu's uh, favorable return to power. Um, couple of things uh, about this whole thing. Yes. Um, in Reni Gunta, I saw this on social media, so I don't know how truthful this is. There was a raid on one of the cars and it turned out that it was a, YRC, a YSRCP car and they found a lot of duplicate EVMs, electronic voting machines. Uh, Sastrigaru, you and I know who was the reason for 2009 mega victory of the Congress party across Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. We know who that is. So. Is this true? Is it, or is this something old thing being recycled that uh, duplicate EVMs are found? There is a strong suspicion on this point. But the thing is, uh, there is a suspicion on uh, other parties also. I, I think uh, at this present juncture, uh, it is better not to go into details because uh, the suspicions have not been founded on uh, solid evidence. So I it's not good. I prefer no not to go into details. I know the problem, but the thing is, it may be premature to discuss about it working. Nope, not at all, sir. We will come back to you again in maybe a couple of weeks' time because then the uh, election will be closer. Most we welcome, a reality, uh, realistic, reality check at that time. But, sir, let us get back to what happened between uh, Chandra Babu Naidu and the BJP. Talk to us a little bit about Polavaram project. What I have read about this is that in the first site where Polavaram was planned was under the Chandra Babu Naidu government and they felt that it is not a place to store the water but they needed to go up further on the yes. Godavari and then what the idea was that Godavari water from Polavaram will come all the way down to Penna which is in Chitur which is like yes. 100 kilometers or 150 kilometers from Chennai. That complete along the state border, along the edge to the Bay of Bengal, yes. it was going to collect from Godavari to Krishna and Krishna yes. to Penna. Yes. So, so, but there was a big furore, something about special status not being given to Andhra Pradesh. And yes. in lieu of that, they said, you give me so much money for Polavaram, I will not ask anything else by Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu. And then that money disappeared. That was what I was told. I read this somewhere. 
again sometimes you never know in whatsapp what is true and what is not true talk to us a little bit about where the friction started and then why things are now back the same as they were before over to you sir friction started not definitely with the polavaram but it went deeper and uh, the thing is when the public perception was narendra modi is going to lose uh, 2019 elections and congress is the emerge going to emerge as the winner chandrababu naidu has developed second thoughts and continuing his relationship with the bjp that's why because it was a happy union for the previous four years but all of a sudden they have developed it this alma city was well founded it's a kind of strategy and he is not a person who is uh, going to fight on public issues etc he is a very deep politician he a very good strategist a king maker in the earlier uh, united front government etc and he is very keen on repeating that role that's the that these are the factors special category status they never uh, pressed for it initially but when they wanted to break the alliance special category status was made uh, brought to the forefront made the biggest issue to um, break the alliance similarly polavaram as you rightly said your information is very good uh, uh, it is based on facts and uh, much can be said uh, to substantiate it but the thing is since they are in the alliance again again the happy union has taken place it may not be palatable for us to repeat those things <laughs> and more than that the more than these two issues the major issue is vijag steel plants privatization it has been rattling the minds of people and very soon i think uh, narendra modi is going to make an announcement publicly that vijag steel plant can never be allowed to be privatized and they were they are going to make a good statement um, uh, about the special status or something similar to it and polavaram also that's why very soon the earlier issues may get dissolved and um, since they are only ploys to break the alliance you can't really say they are the real issues real issues are deeper even today the problem is bjp has a love hate relationship with telugu desam telugu desam never trusts uh, bjp really because they have a feeling that their alliance or uh, when they uh, ally with bjp it may cost them uh, um, minority votes muslim votes in uh, uh, many areas that is one problem and another thing is the chandrababu uh, naidu considers narendra modi a good jeev a very big junior to him in politics that's why the question of seniority also played a role earlier likewise there are certain other problems but the thing is as of now there should not be any problem initially because narendra modi is uh, expected to uh, come back with a very uh, comfortable majority then there should not be any problem if it god forbid narendra modi loses his majority or we are going to have a hung parliament you can't say for certain what is going to be the policy or role of telugu desam in that kind of a scenario thank you sir uh, I, i meant no disrespect today i don't have my helper uh, helping me in the back end so i have to do all the questions and checking also so if you could just give me one second i will add add all the questions line up the questions and then we can uh, uh, we can go through the q and a session just a few questions that are lined up here one second you we have some of the highest number of comments today you know i i am overwhelmed thank you so much guys so many of you have asked questions here um, so let's start with this one sir this is a very important question i was going to ask you when i saw that somebody was asking the question i thought i'll wait why is swami paripurnananda not being tapped by the bjp it is surprising that bjp is unable to crack in telugu belt when they are doing better in much tougher terrains like tamil nadu and kerala 
Thank you, Srinivas Ji. Paripur, regarding Paripurnananda, really, ideally speaking, he should have been the topper in the list of BJP candidates because he is a staunch uh, Hindu Tuvadi. Uh, Dharma Vira stood for Dharma and he is a fearless fighter. And he was a uh, um, bike and uh, um, band, uh, uh, he had a problem with the uh, uh, TRS government where they have evicted him from Hyderabad city and banished him from Hyderabad city. So he has, he is a good candidate. But unfortunately, we live in a world where votes matter, not the qualifications. Paripurnananda Swami is a good fighter. He has uh, many things in his support. But the thing is, unfortunately, the, in the constituency he has chosen, that is Hindupur in Anantapur district, he cannot uh, even uh, comfortably manage to get, um, secure his deposit. Because he doesn't have that many followers numerically, even though uh, if all his supporters are allowed to vote over social media, he will win with uh, thumping majority. <laughs> but unfortunately, all these uh, warriors do not have votes there. And in uh, the, this uh, whole arithmetic, if, if BJP gives him a ticket, really, because I am also, I would love to see Paripunananda Swami enter into pa parliament. I want to see him as a, a Hindu ca candidate contesting on Hindu agenda. But the thing is, there are very uh, in poll arithmetic, there are many things to be considered, and that's why the, he has absolutely no chance of winning. Therefore, if the BJP had no intention of winning the seat, it would have given it to him. Because no one expected him, because he announced himself as the candidate. He was a self-appointed uh, candidate. No one considered him with any stage. No one gave him any, in any students. His name did not figure in any of the uh, meetings conducted by the party in the in any survey conducted by the party at any time. That's why he can't expect. We also cannot expect. And we just like Madhavilata in Hyderabad, Paripurananda Swami in uh, Hindupur also, they have to adjust to the reality. Thank you so much, sir. And, and viewers, I want this thought to sink in for all of you. You know, uh, Swami Paripunananda is a disciple of Swami Dhananda Saraswati who passed away in 2015. And it is believed that Swami Dhananda Saraswati is one of the mentors of Narendra Modi. Right yes. through his chief minister days all the way up to prime minister days. If So that means he, he knows Swami Paripunananda very well. If, if you see the hard arithmetic that goes into selecting a candidate, this will give you an idea. Somebody who and, knows uh, well. Amit sir, his feet, sir. When yeah, yeah, Paripurna yeah. Swami went to uh, Delhi prior to his joining the uh, BJP, Amit sir touched his feet. A special meeting was arranged uh, for him. And he was um, uh, prized in glowing terms by all the top leaders, they have terrific respect to him, but they have to also to consider polar theory. Very true. And and viewers, I've, I've had the good fortune of interacting with him. Very knowledgeable person, very trenched in, you know, Sanatana Dharma. He speaks so well. Also, I've seen him address public rallies. He is a real magnetic, uh, you know, boat, uh, personality when he talks. So hopefully the BJP will use him to canvas at least to try and get the news to, to get him to be more familiar and, and see if that will help them. I think it will help, but I don't know. I mean, I'm just an observer. Over to you, sir. So you are promoting me. So you are promoting my future career so kind of you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I agree. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think credit where credit is due. Srikant IRG wants to know, MVR Garu, how much emphasis is being made by BJP, TDP, JS about Telugu instruction in schools? Is it something people also demand? In uh, well, the, the, the Telugu, uh, Andhra, Andhra Pradesh, it was the first state to be formed on linguistic basis. 
it was the first among the linguistic states. It was a yeah, terrific movement has taken place. Many people have sacrificed, yet the long battle spread over many decades were there. But still, the shameful reality is that we, the people, have forgotten Telugu language and the ruling parties, whether it is the present ruling party or the next ruling party, they have been denying the Telugu language the proper place it deserves and uh, our Telugu medium has been banished and all the fundamental right given by the constitution to every student to get education in his mother tongue has been denied to the people all by um, saying that the Telugu parents are not interested in Telugu medium. It is a lie and we have to bring terrific pressure on the governments to, to make them realize like uh, uh, the Tamil Nadu and the Karnataka, mother tongue should be given proper pride of place and uh, it should be implemented as official language. We have all to press for it. We request your help to um, um, propagate this cause. Shastri Garu, I will tell you one secret. When I was studying intermediate, and that was unified Andhra Pradesh, and one of the good things Nanti Ramarao Garu did was that, uh, you know, actually this is even before that, never mind. So when we used to study for intermediate, right, the Telugu book on intermediate mathematics was four levels above what the English book was giving. So yes. if anybody was serious about, like, for example, you wanted to pursue engineering or you wanted to go abroad and study, you solve the problems from the Telugu book. That was the reference. That was so much better. The questions were tough, but if you mastered that, your grounding in mathematics was something else. So Telugu, there are books like that which were fantastic. Even the physics, chemistry, all these things. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the books that came in Telugu, and this was published by the government, by the way. Sastri Garu, this is not even private. Government books are so much better yes, yes. than what used yeah. to be in. So I'm very surprised yeah. why in this 30, 40 years, Things have gone so bad. I had nothing but praise, sir. Today, if you wake me up in, and speak to me in a language other than English. See, I've lived 30 years in US. So if, if you speak to me in Telugu, I'll be able to Im immediately respond back. My grounding in Telugu is much stronger than any yes. other language, yes. including my mother yes. tongue, sir. This is this is what has the influence that I've had on, on learning Telugu in while I was growing up. So this is, this is important, guys. Everybody's mother tongue is very important. And, and yes. you learn the best in using your mother tongue. Yes. I've done a series with Ranjit uh, Kadiala. You guys may have seen that. Uh, three or four episodes where he was in, went yes. and analyzed country yes. after country and said that those countries who taught the basic mathematics, science, social studies in the mother tongue were the ones that had the best grounding. So anyway, that's just, a, this is very, very sad when people talk about, you know, not uh, respecting one's own mother tongue. Sarvani Tumuluri wants to know, Sastri sir, the booths in Nadi Patnam, Hyderabad constituency, the booths are in narrow lanes, scary, many people looking at them back off from voting. Uh, I am not working in uh, GHMC or in any town planning department, I am afraid I cannot. Uh, we cannot uh, discuss about it, I mean, about the roads, etc. <laughs> Sir, I will tell you, I have seen the, some of these things. You know, the, the the road sometimes will be part Hindu, part Muslim. The thing that separates is one gunny bag, sir. One gunny bag is there. A ghost and cut up a loco. A ghost and cut up a loco. It will be undo. That is the rule. Really? <laughs> oh, gosh. Sarvani again, uh, Sastri Garu, if Feroz Khan contests from Congress, will that not split the votes or delimitation is the only way to win? Uh, kindly repeat. Feroz Khan, Feroz Khan. Have you heard of Feroz Khan? They are saying that Feroz oh. Khan might contest from Congress. Yes, in know, Hyderabad. Which... Hyderabad, huh, huh. Will that yes. not split the votes? Will that not split the votes? It will not, because there is uh, a kind of match fixing already taken place and uh, to ensure uh, MIM's win, because Congress has an understanding with uh, MIM already, 
and they don't want to antagonize that power. And Firoz Khan is not a serious contender, even in the estimation of his own party, as I understand it. If he wins, it will be another miracle. Next question. A magnet Ranga wants to know, MVRS Garu, Pavan Kalyan has hardly had any past electoral impact. CBN seems a spent force and untrustworthy. Did BJP do the right thing in aligning with them? It is BJP has uh, really, there are many serious objections uh, to, to, to the way the BJP has entered into alliance. And uh, Pawan Kalyan and the BJP should have contested together and with the uh, Narendra Modi factor, they would have at least gotten uh, comfortable seats. Because it's not the case even, to, uh, even now, this uh, choice of candidates, their chances of winning, there are many, many doubts expressed. And even if uh, they win, it will not be a respectable win. Like in Telangana, in Andhra, BJP is uh, uh, suffering. And Pawan Kalyan also, he has been playing a deep game. He is seemingly a loser, but he is making his way to, uh, to emerge as a um, kingmaker in post poll scenario. Thank you, sir. Next question. Kya ye Congress ki new guarantee scheme aaj announce hua hai? Aaj announce hua hai. Kam karegi sentiment palat sakta hai kya? That is there. But the thing is, uh, since uh, the battle lines are very much drawn, since it's not a triangular fight and a direct fight, and uh, we know what Congress we stand for, Congress stands for, we also know what for B what BJP stands for. But ultimately, it is uh, the Congress gimmicks will not play, and Congress has not even stabilized the government in the uh, administration. There are many, many problems they are facing. So people have no confidence in the new government as of now. Only thing is they could blast the image of uh, the previous government by their exposures, but they are yet to prove their worth and emerge as uh, the people's benefactors. Thank you, sir. Next question. Suhas so Kumala Party wants to know, why isn't BJP embracing Raghurama Raju? This alone has impacted the TDP plus. Raghurama Krishna Raju. Raghurama Krishna Raju, we can't uh, say his story is uh, like a daily serial taking many twists and turns. Even now, nobody knows where it will end. The latest is that he was denied a uh, uh, Narsapur seat. And the public perception is because Jagan didn't want him to be given a ticket. And the Chief Minister Jagan has influenced Amit Shah. And Amit Shah has prevailed on Chandrababu Naidu. Like that, many stories have gone round. But the reality is he was denied a ticket by BJP in Narsapur. And he cannot expect to become BJP candidate because he was never in BJP any time. And he was sailing with Teludesam, uh, the, uh, the officially continuing as YSR CP MP. So BJP is nowhere in the picture. So for the sake of convenience, he wanted to contest BJP. And BJP didn't find him suitable. You can't blame BJP on it. Now he, the problem is with him and uh, TDP. And TDP, now uh, the... Uh, 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 latest information is that he would be considered as an MLA in Wundi constituency, which is adjacent to Bhimavaram. So uh, he met uh, Chandrababu Naidu today, and there were many discussions have taken place. But even now, it has not been finalized. And it seems Chandrababu has given him an assurance that he will try to um, convince Amit Shah and make him a candidate for Narsapur Lok Sabha again. That is also a rumor. In Andhra Pradesh politics, everything is uh, hearsay and uh, everyone is an expert. You can't know for certain what is happening. Thank you, sir. Uh, here is uh, praise for you from Laliteswar Raju Valluru. Shastri Garu assessed the situation with perfection. The prestigious Hyderabad would go to AIMIM beyond doubt, albeit BJP put 
keeping a tough fight. The vote share of BJP is going to increase. That's the only takeaway. Yes. Sir, last question, sir. Uh, Betal wants to know. Thank you, Betal ji. MVR Garu, when will Kula Pichi end in Andhra? When will? Kula, Kula Pichi. Kula Pichi. Kula Matam. Ah. Amma cast. cast. <laughs> ah. When will it end? End. It, it will not end. end. <laughs> it will not end me like Aswatthama and Haluman. It is a Chiranjeevi. <laughs> it will never end. It's end. The attempt to end it has been going on for many, many years. It will not have stop. And we are blessed to live with it forever. Because everyone is a hypocrite. Everyone wants to end caste, but everyone always thinks in terms of caste. That's the problem when uh, we. Uh, our public utterances are different. Our thinking pattern is different. Unless we break our own uh, hypocritical attitude, caste is there to stay forever. Thank you so much, Shastri Garu. And viewers, I hope you like this session. Shastri Garu, I'm going to invite him again back in a couple of weeks' time as we go through and see how things shape up closer to the election. And sir, thank you so much for taking valuable time from your. Uh, you know, I, know, I, I, know you, I am in ten WhatsApp groups with you, sir. I know how busy you are, so please don't be modest. No, no, I find it difficult to manipulate my cell phone because I am not used to it. So therefore, if I have made a monkey of myself, please forgive me because no, no, because no, no, I am not. not, at all, not at all. Not at all. This is fantastic quality. We managed to fix it in no in time. No Thank problem. You. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank it's you so much. It's a pleasure and an honor to be called for this session. Thank you, sir. Namaskaram. Namaskaram.